Hey everyone, so after being in both Switch Emulator's Discords for a while, both users and Rijinxes, I've noticed a lot of people wanting a brief summary of the monthly progs reports, rather than spending the time to read through them. Um, so after seeing that, I've decided to create a roundup of sorts where I give an overview of each emulator's progress for a given month. With that being said, let's now get into user's July 2021 progress report. This month has been huge in terms of progress for Yuzu, with the most notable update being Project Hades. This project has been in development for 6 months, which consists of a rewrite of the Shader Decompiler. Some of the largest improvements from this are many rendering bugs fixed, shader build times reduced, compatibility improvements, and performance increasing by 30% for all GPU vendors. Project Hades also introduced pipeline caches for both Vulkan and OpenGL, which are functionally similar to the shader cache OpenGL had before. Um, previously, Vulkan didn't have a shader cache like OpenGL did, which meant you had to compile shaders you already encountered every time you relaunched the game. This led to stuttery gameplay, but now with the pipeline cache, the shaders are stored and reused. On the topic of shaders, Vulkan also now has parallel shader building. Um, this means that all available CPU threads will be able to compile shaders. This vastly improves shader compilation speeds which results in smoother gameplay in games where you haven't built a pipeline cache yet. Theoretically, there's no limit to how many CPU threads can be allocated to this, so the more threads your CPU has, the smoother the um, shader compilation starters will be. Now that we got the performance aspects of Project Hades out of the way, Project Hades also fixed a lot of rendering bugs in games such as Bravely Default 2. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Luigi's Mansion 3, and Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Um, these rendering bug fixes allowed many games that used to be unplayable due to their graphical glitches to be played with minimal issues. Besides Project Hades, many more improvements were made this month, a notable one being the introduction of pre-queuing frames. This fixed the frame pacing issues in games such as Xenoblade Chronicles, Monster Hunter Rise, and Link's Awakening, which provided a smoother gameplay experience. Now, there are a lot of other improvements made that I haven't covered, such as improvements to audio, input, and UI, so I recommend reading through the progress report yourself if you're interested in these changes, as it's very informative. Um, also, at the end of the progress report, they tease their project art, which is a resolution scaler, um, so this will be a nice addition to have um, to use in the future. Now, moving on to Ryjinx's July 2021 progress report, um, Ryjinx also had an eventful month with the most notable addition being Vulcan. Note that it's still in its PR form and a work in progress, so it hasn't been merged into the master build yet. Um, features such as alpha tests and multi-sampling support are still yet to be added, and there are still numerous bugs that need to be fixed. However, for those out there using AMD and Intel GPUs, the news about Vulkan should get you excited, as for AMD, performance is much better compared to OpenGL, and many games that didn't render correctly on OpenGL with Intel iGPUs render a lot better on Vulkan. Another feature that is yet to be implemented is the use of Spear V, which allows for much faster shader compilation on Vulkan compared to OpenGL's GLSL. Um, so here's a comparison between GLSL multi-threaded versus Spear V single-threaded. As you can see here, Spear V compiles shaders a lot quicker, and once Spear V compilation becomes multi-threaded, it will become even faster. Moving on from Vulkan, there was an issue present where the Mi applet would not render correctly on AMD and Intel GPUs, which prevented users from creating their own Mi's. Um, that has been fixed this month, which now allows AMD and Intel GPU users to create their own Mi's for games such as Miitopia and Mario Golf. Another issue was that when scaling Monster Hunter Stories 2's resolution up, the battles did not render correctly. This is due to a small inconsistency on the shader, which has been fixed, and now battles render perfectly when scaled up. Another big improvement made this month was greatly improving the performance on Skyward Sword HD. The game was fully playable on release, however only very high-end PCs were able to emulate it at full speed. Thanks to two updates which optimize texture flushes, the game can now run full speed on many more systems, even when upscaled to 4K. Games such as Pokemon Sword and Shield that flushes textures more frequently also had significant performance improvements. Once again, this is just a brief overview of a couple topics I found the most important in these progress reports, and there are many other improvements I haven't covered, so I strongly recommend reading through these uh, reports yourselves as they're very informative. Um, so yeah, that's my brief overview of Yuzu's and Ryujinx's progress reports. Um, I'll link their Patreons down in the description below if you want to go support their work. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Peace.